and you know our group um, kind of raised some questions um, for Donnell and the rest of the team. You know, um, one of the things we talked about are the schools on the bottom side. You know, they're going to cost a lot to you know, fix the schools to really get them to where we want them to be. So you know, where are those funds going to come from? Um, another thing we talked about were you know uh, just one emphasize the fact that you know uh, for the students that are in the Rocky Mountain schools, well, there are in the schools on the Rocky Mountain side. Uh, Eshkel County, we want them to stay in those schools and not have to move over to Eshkel County. So, how do we make sure that they stay in those schools and still receive that same high quality uh, level of education? And, uh, you know, another question we have was uh, is there a way, I think, you know, this may have been addressed earlier, but is there a way of getting the city of Rocky Mountain back to this equation? You know, helping to, you know, uh, address some of those needs in the months. Uh, but overall, our discussion to emphasize education, education is what's most important, and at the end of the day, quality education is what Good evening, everybody. I am Kelsey Ballard. I'm the principal at West Central Middle School. And so at our table, we had three big wonderings. The first one was about the quality of the education. So really a desire for um, to make sure that we're not moving backwards, but that we would be moving forward to be pushing towards um, an even better education experience for our students. The second was about the funding and lots of questions about how do we make this work and who's going to build this and how does all the, the dollars add up. And then the third was really about engagement. A couple different ideas we talked through. Mentors, what would that look like in schools and how could we amplify that? Life skills, like truly preparing students. Um, Mr. Silver's re um, referenced our, um, um, I'm blanking on the word, our 25 graduate aims. For the time we hit 25, we want our students to have, and, and Dr. B referenced that list. And so really saying, okay, what do we need, what do students need in order to be prepared to for this dream that we have for them for the time they're 25? And then also experiences. And Donnell spoke to this earlier, but what experiences do we want students to have when they're in our buildings and when they're on different campuses and when they're in places in the community? What experiences do we want them to have on a consistent basis? Good afternoon, good afternoon. Um, I'm Tia Lucas. I am the owner and operator of Dynamic Learning, which is a tutoring service downtown Rocky Mount. Um, so my table had some very, very, very deep discussions, but I'm going to narrow it down to two. Um, one of the things was what happens to administration and the teachers. So of course, with the increase of students, there's going to be an increase of administration, increase of teachers. Um, it's probably going to raise between 33% or somewhere in the near park. And then the other takeaway, um, how do we retain those teachers? Um, the supplement on one district is one thing and the supplement in another district is another thing. So how do we keep those teachers, those good teachers or those teachers that we need to help, how do we keep those teachers so that the kids can grow and learn and it won't be like a one-sided fix? So like I said, we had some very deep discussions but I narrowed it down to two. So much, so much. Thank you. Thanks for everyone for sharing. Thanks for taking notes again. We're going to take all of this, we're going to put it all together. Um, Dr. B, myself, and Aaron, we'll, we'll get in the room. Uh, and Dr. Meyer, can try to make sense of it all. And then hopefully, like, just project that back to you. Here's what you said. Here's what it means. Um, but we, we hear you. So thank, thank you all for, for your contribution. And now um, we're going to allow just some space and time for like any of the, for the remaining burning questions that you might have. Um, so maybe Dr. B and uh, Mr. Evans are going to come to the front, um, and then we have some. We do have some some dignitaries here that might also be able to answer some of those questions. But um, we just want to hear from you. Like if they can answer at the table, um, what questions are you still holding on to?
So I, we want to answer our questions. So you stay beyond this time, just all extra credit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what other questions do you have? <laughs> uh, I was born and raised right here in Rocky Mount, and um, I experienced something years ago, and it's still in my head and my heart. When did the school itself start dealing with the children with ADHD or written or whatever you want to call it? That is about one of the hurtfulest things I ever had in my life, is to handle a child something that goes there and make you look. Do you get it? How long has this been going on? Why is it? And can you solve it? You might can't solve it, but it's a situation that I, I just couldn't handle. I hope that you don't have to do that too many more times with children. Yeah, we, we, we hear you, we hear you loud and clear. Um, yeah, we hear you. And I'm, I'm sure that might, that might happen in some places, but yeah, we hear you. Yeah. Really quick, is, is there anyone else that might have a question? I got a concern, not a question. Okay. So thank you for the question. Um, I think it's important that we hear what you're saying because a lot of times when these things happen, we don't know exactly how it impacts individual students. Um, I've not heard of that, and I've had several principals and assistant principals in the room. I've not heard of that happening, but for us, I think that's something for us to think about and to inform our, um, our discipline practices. Right now, we are working on an equity plan that looks at our policies and looks at the way we, we treat our students and what kind of infractions our students are having. So again, I can't answer what will we do. What we want to do is do better than what we just heard you describe. And so we appreciate you sharing that with us because as we're meeting and we're talking, it's our job to make sure that doesn't happen to our students. But thank you. Thanks for having me. Ms. Nancy, I'm Yes. Uh, like I said, I got a concern. Um, been active in the school system since the early 80s along with um, Ms. Evelyn Wilson and Ms. Ann Kent. And um, the school system endeared to me. But what I thought I was going to see, and I'm, 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 I'm good with what y'all are doing, but when it said the merger, I was hoping it was going to be some discussion on the uh, Senate bill, um, you know, educating the people on that. I know you're focusing more on design and design, whatever way you go with it, because I live in Pine Tops, but I'm still concerned. Um, 
I just wanted to see some more input on, uh, uh, some more education on the Senate Bill 382. Um, how long do the county commissioners plan to um, let it go until they make a decision? And then when they do, uh, where the money gonna come from? And you're talking about designing schools, uh, where that money gonna come from? I mean, I, I just think, you know, I understand about the design of the schools and all that, and I'm for all that. But like I say, I think people need to be educated on the Senate Bill 382, and I would like to hear my representatives, like uh, Representative Shelley Willingham and all of them, uh, where do they stand? I mean, I've heard our county commissioner chair say he's for it, and I'm quite sure everybody, a lot of people's for it. So if we're for it, how are we going to move forward? You know, how long are we gonna let this thing linger on? We need to be coming to some kind of conclusion so we can know how we wanna do it and how we can move forward. Thank you. So, Earlier, I, in my presentation, I talked about. Gotcha. So uh, earlier, I, I shared the, the main what six bullet points from Senate Bill 382, which became session law 2016-14. Um, you know, it's about a two-page, three-page bill, but those are the six main points that come out of it. And and, and I agree. I think our last meeting, this meeting, and the third meeting. Is, is another opportunity for us to continue to share this so people can understand exactly, you know, the statute that, that we're standing under right now. And, and you know, the, really the predicament it puts us in as, as leaders in Edgecombe County. So, you know, I appreciate you being here helping us to uh, share this information. You know, obviously there, if we move forward in this, there's a lot of consideration about what will we do and how will we pay for it. So first of all, we need to make sure we clearly understand Edgecombe County, we are putting out a lot of money for those 16, 1700 students. We're happy to do so. Um, if this happens, that money then comes to our school system. All right, so everything that you know we're, we're putting in and current expense, that gap that I talked about earlier that Rocky Mountain used to cover, that we cover now, about 450,000 or so per year, the amount that we're dishing out in capital costs, both Debt service already on the books, current projects, future projects, all of that will come then to our school system. So also all of the state and federal money that follows those students would follow them right into Edgecombe County School. So there is money right there that's being spent. And it's a lot of money, we're happy to do it. Education is a priority for our board. We're happy to do that. So there's a lot of money all the way from Edgecombe County to Riley, D.C. that will follow those students right up. Now, obviously, there are some additional things we want to do. That money is not necessarily there. Uh, if there is work that needs to be done to any of those four schools that need to come over, um, that money is not there. If we want to try to do it all at one time, that's not something that we, is feasible for us to do. But certainly, those buildings will become our responsibility. Thank you. We we have, okay, and then I'm going to go here ahead. We have, then let's talk about last question too, right? And my superintendent of Fletcher told me I got to spend the night to answer all the questions. If y'all still have some, uh, after this one. I, I just want to um, say first, thank you for having these meetings uh, because this is what we need in the community. The question was asked, where do I stand if we're talking about the emerging? Let me just tell you that. Uh, I've been involved with this since the beginning. I was one of the original students when we sued the Nash County and Rocky Mountain So I've been working with that since that time, so I'm very familiar with it. Also, part of the discussion that we had, the bills you're talking about, I was part of the of that negotiation. And I know one brother, like I said at the beginning, I fought against Camel and Merchant because I thought that was it. The best way for us to educate our children is that everybody going to the same, you know, we all live in the same community, so we should be going to the same schools. But over the years, with the things that's happened in the, uh, with our students in the uh, National Academy of School System, I made a complete turnaround. I support the emergency. I think we should take our students back. And there, are um, the discussions, and I can assure you, there are uh, resources out there to help us to do what we are trying to do, what we're talking about doing. And I can assure you, I've traveled around the country, 
and let me say, uh, there is no system that's better than the educational uh, public school system. I can tell you that. Uh, you have some of the best people in the state working on this. Uh, I, I made Aaron, for instance, over there. Uh, I think that we went, I went to three or four places around the country, and the experts they had that are talking about innovation was Aaron. So, I mean, and I read about the Edgecombe County School System, and just as one of this, I won't be too long, but when the Rocky Mountain and the Nash County schools merged, Rocky Mountain had the better system. So we really kind of uh, weakened, you know, uh, the quality of our education when we did merge. But at the time, we thought it was worth it to get all our students on the same track. Now, uh, I think we're on the right track. Uh, I think we have uh, people to make it happen. And I can tell you there are a lot of other resources, both statewide and federal, that we will be able to utilize. And just as someone mentioned, a lot of the money that it's, uh, National County is getting now, it comes because of our students being in that system. So uh, I don't think we need to be real concerned about where the money's going to come from. Let's make sure that we have the programs ready and we're going to be providing what the students need when they come over. We have all the other stuff, and we will find a way to get the resources to make it happen. And then we'll take the last question, and again, I will be speaking that night. <laughs> First of all, I, I just applaud you for trying to understand the problem, because that's important. And so to your, to your, to your comment, I think I heard you say that one, the decision is not fully made yet. So right now they're in the process of trying to understand where you're headed. Now, and I'm not going to give all my other thoughts because the elected official has already has already answered some of them, and uh, that's his job. But I, I do think it's important that you all stay actively engaged in, in this process. And I would ask that you look at the metrics that we use for the accounting and make sure they don't change in the process. The, the last piece I would even ask is that, uh, Madam Superintendent, you are, you are the full of whether this thing is right or not right because they're putting a lot on you. One third of your weight is just gonna be added to you. And I have a concern. So just make sure the metrics don't change. And hopefully, one of the things you have in your kit bag is the possibility of even a second superintendent. This is all. So maybe all we need, man. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> I'm going to take home. So again, thank you, right? Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Um, I appreciate Mr. Evans so much just giving us uh, a view. I, I think we asked for a little deeper. We can work on that. I think Mr. Kenyon, you said you put the Senate bill up on the website, and maybe next time we'll go a little deeper. Um, but everybody has to do their homework, right? So you have to check and you have to ask. I think as Mr. Cannon was talking with lots of parents and community members, there were people who simply just didn't know. Like they didn't know this was happening or this, actually this has happened, right? It has not taken effect because we continue to, to send money to cover our students that are there and make sure. So on the overhead, you see a um, uh, you see a survey. You can certainly use your phone. Um, they're at your table. Um, this is to gather more information so that, that Mr. Kenny can kind of look at the information. If you will, please complete the survey. We ask that you do that. Again, we thank you for coming out tonight. If you have questions or things that we didn't get to, there are index cards on your table. Take a minute, capture those thoughts. Leave them for someone who you've seen who's a, your table facilitator. And then our next meeting is May 18th. We will be at ECC, the Rocky Mountain Campus, 5 to 6.30. If there are others, I think I heard a, a staff member from NASH say, some don't know. If you would help us with how to maybe make that happen, you can connect with Mr. Cannon so that the, uh, the 18th, we can have more staff, more parents, 
said, you know what, we want to hear from parents. We want to hear what their thoughts are um, about the process. And then as county commissioners, both boards, we will meet again on May 31st. So that gives us some information to hear from you all three different times. We've been on the 3rd, today the 10th, and the 18th. And then we'll meet again on the 31st to both boards and share information and unpack some of the things that you all asked tonight. Um, and that's our, that's our next step. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, England has a handful of like flyers and that has all the survey information on it. You can flip on the bag, try to capture the timeline of all this succinctly. So just a, another point of information. So please take a few of those, share them out the community so that we can get the survey out. It's also posted on our website. So if you go to ecps.us, right under the merger, you'll see uh, the survey is also located there. And it's on all of our social media pages. So, but thank y'all, we'll see y'all next week.